discussion in neurology is stroke or you can say cerebrovascular disease and of course like in that one we are going to cover stroke in detail and of course it will take like not one rather two or three hours of lectures to finish this one so uh, the simplest definition of stroke can be simply a stroke causes sudden loss of neurological function by disrupting the blood supply to the brain okay so stroke causes sudden loss of neurological function by disrupting the blood supply to the brain and when stroke does this thing it causes physical disability and also stroke is the leading cause of death as well and it is not common in just developed countries rather both in developed as well as developing countries the great majority of the strokes come on without warning so now you can say um we call it a stroke when someone have either a documented lesion on imaging or the symptoms for for more than 24 hours when there is no documented lesion on imaging or the symptoms are for less than 24 hours we call it as tia transient ischemic attack now transient ischemic attack is you can say it's a ringing bell that you know the stroke is coming or uh, the person is at risk of stroke for example you can see this one this is the ct scan for cerebral infarction and you can see over here a big area or a big hypodense area here as well as here so of course like there is the blood supply to this area is disrupted okay so when the blood supply is depressed disrupted there is no blood supply to that part of the brain so this part of the brain is damaged and of course like some of the neurological functionings are disturbed lost or disrupted so now why stroke is going to take a lot of time because uh, okay now stroke can be uh, you can say like there are two principal pathological processes that give rise to stroke um, for example one is the occlusion of the artery which i show you here okay or which can be seen over um, here like see there is occlusion over here and then this is like after reperfusion therapy and whenever there is occlusion of the artery it will cause cerebral ischemia or infarction cerebral ischemia or infarction this one okay so this is this is like occlusion of the artery which is which have caused cerebral ischemia or infarction or it could be rupture of the artery causing intracranial hemorrhage so, so you can see over here this you know like some of the artery is ruptured and there is collection of the blood here or you can see of course this is postpartum see the blood is collected over here hemorrhagic stroke or hemorrhage tends to be much more destructive and dangerous than ischemic stroke and there is more mortality in hemorrhagic stroke and uh, higher you can say chances or higher incidence of severe neurological disability in survivors in survivors right but the good thing is like the ischemic stroke is much more common and has a much wider range of outcomes okay 
now to many of the many of the students by the way uh, the thing is if you don't know um, the functions of the brain or the functional areas of the brain of course like you can never understand how the stroke affects the humans right um, okay to talk about that like uh, first of all what I will be doing is like uh, simply um, I am going to uh, talk about the epidemiology okay as well as uh, causes we'll do later but first of all we will talk about the epidemiology how common is stroke and things like this okay and then uh, we are going to talk about what you can say um, we will do pathophysiology then of course clinical features once we like I will talk in the start about the clinical features then of course in the later on we don't have to talk much about the clinical features okay uh, one more thing which is important by the way um, okay I will I will start with uh, the definitions okay the definition for the stroke uh, like I told you a very simple definition already right so you can say sudden onset of a neurological um, deficit okay of a vascular basis with infarction of uh, <clears throat> CNS central nervous system tissue right so what is infarction now infarction is a permanent tissue injury infarction is a permanent tissue injury which is confirmed by neuroimaging right and TIA is simply defined as you can say um, sudden onset of again neurological deficits okay of vascular basis okay basis without infarction okay so simply uh, when we do imaging in these patients you know we don't see infarction in these people okay now guys you know stroke is uh, the third most common cause of death or you can say like uh, the epidemiology uh, by the way the epidemiology of this one is so 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 vast like like cannot be covered uh, of course like there, there will be lectures on epidemiology of the stroke as well it is the third most common <clears throat> cause of death in the world okay uh, of course like first two being the cancer and the uh, ischemic heart diseases and it is the most common cause of um, <clears throat> Of disability like how the people become disabled rheumatoid arthritis is there accidents are there many things are there stroke is the most common cause of severe you can say uh, physical disability okay physical disability so like uh, it's also a common medical emergency like uh, you can say uh, around up to 300 uh, per 100,000 uh, cases in emergency uh, cases in emergencies emergencies are uh, stroke related okay so now uh, see uh, this is very 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 important guys okay so now you know like many people who have stroke you know they, they die and many of these people you know they survive but like with some of the physical disability okay so 
you know when we are talking about stroke guys uh, again uh, uh, we'll be talking about hemorrhage we'll be talking about ischemia we will be talking about subarachnoid hemorrhage we will be talking about extradural hemorrhage or subdural hemorrhage so uh, there are different things but you know the most important thing clinically is lesion local localization okay and of course like uh, uh, whenever there will be stroke of course uh, um, the patients will be presenting with upper motor neuron type of lesion right that makes sense okay uh, so okay I will start from the top and then I will come down for example the most uh, uh, the, or the higher functions can is controlled by the cortex cerebral cortex I'm talking about right so uh, simply we can say cortical right so cortical what what happens when someone have cortical um, stroke okay uh, okay one more important thing uh, is to understand the blood supply of the brain uh, now um, for example the brain is supplied by two arteries so two two circulations you know the anterior circulation and the vertebral basilar circulation um, I want to take out like a more specific type of uh, uh, diagrams just to show you uh, for example yes uh, we'll talk about this when the anterior carotid artery goes and it gives anterior cerebral as well as the middle cerebral artery right and then there is vertebral basilar circulation uh, which gives like circle of villus is there um, I think like to, to, to give you a better understanding for this thing I must open Bing and I will I'll be talking about uh, a blood supply to the brain uh, so uh, if we will t talk about the blood supply to the brain of course we are going to get a lot of um, nice representations okay um, okay one for example this one uh, now uh, if you will see this one this diagram let's talk about uh, the anterior circulation or you can see the internal carotid artery it gives like the anterior cerebral artery as well as the middle cerebral artery so, so see like the anterior cerebral artery it coming from here it is supplying this area as well as this area middle cerebral artery is supplying a very 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 huge area over here okay and then the posterior cerebral artery is the one which supplies look here um, wait I will, I will show you some more diagrams to make you understand it better way yes maybe this one can serve the purpose uh, okay okay so see this one there is anterior cerebral artery there is uh, like this one okay uh, and then there is middle cerebral artery which which supply most of the lateral part of the cortex and there is posterior cerebral artery as well and then there is uh, anterior communicating artery okay over here um, now the important thing like why I'm showing you this thing is uh, um, to tell you for example one more diagram okay okay like which is a simplified diagram of course you can see over here internal carotid artery is coming and it is giving ophthalmic artery as well as anterior cerebral artery then there is middle cerebral artery and then there is posterior cerebral artery which is coming from the vertebral artery right so and I will show you something called as um, circle of villus right um, here uh, you can see over here the posterior <coughs> <laughs> two vertebral arteries they combine together and make a basilar artery and the basilar artery uh, basically you can see over here there is posterior cerebral artery going from here okay and the anterior cerebral artery 
gives the anterior communicating art branch and the posterior communicating branch like this one this is the posterior communicating communicating branch right so uh, see there is a circle is formed over here this is called as a circle of willis and circle of willis basically perform a lot of important uh, supply uh, the, the supply from the posterior cerebral artery is coming from here basilar artery then there is posterior inferior cerebellar artery there is anterior inferior cerebellar arteries not cerebral cerebellar this is cerebellum okay and then there are pontine branches pontine means what pontine branches means what like the one which are supplying the pons okay and then there is superior cerebellar artery which is supplied like supplying the superior part of the cerebellum okay so uh, why why i'm stressing on this thing right now is simply uh, because uh, okay a very 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 nice i think the best one which which someone anyone can found um, here they are giving colors right now see this is the lateral part of the brain they are showing here so you can see when we see the lateral part of the brain this is mca area middle cerebral artery this one is ac area anterior cerebral artery and this one is posterior cerebral artery area right and when we see it from the medial side of the cortex this is anterior cerebral artery area this is posterior cerebral artery area this is middle cerebral artery area so if you can see laterally middle cerebral artery is covering a huge area but from medial side it gets covers a less area whereas anterior cerebral artery and posterior cerebral artery laterally covers less area whereas here medially they cover a big area right and when you will do other cross section again uh, you can see a different story this is the one which is supplied by the anterior cerebral artery this is this area which is supplied by the uh, middle cerebral artery and this is the area which is supplied by the posterior cerebral artery okay and from up when you see like the things look like this so very 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 easy way to understand right by like so far the best diagram so now the important things or what i told you what will happen if someone's middle cerebral artery will be blocked like all the areas which are here no matter it is motor area or sensory area no matter like it, it was this one is the area for the leg or for the arm you know those areas will be weak for example if broca's and wernicke areas blood supply will be gone so the person will be having aphasia right uh, now one very important thing see uh, you can see over here there is thalamus um, there is globus pallidus there is putamen there is caudate nucleus and the blood supply which is coming from the middle cerebral artery it gives small small branches inside right so uh, okay wait For example, I will show you something. Um, you can see, like small, small arteries, they 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 go inside the brain matter, and they supply to deeper structures of the brain. Okay, so. Uh, all of these things of course have some clinical relevance and that's why I'm talking about them uh, so uh, and that's why I'm showing you that thing this thing right so uh, very 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 important guys now now of course like uh, I, I cannot teach you see middle cerebral artery is giving uh, you can say a lot of branches uh, to the short arteries which are going deep inside as well as the anterior cerebral artery are giving some deep branches this is thalamus right this caudate nucleus so uh, now of course like I am teaching you here stroke but uh, of course like I don't have much time to talk more and more about the blood and I cannot teach you all the blood circulation in one go uh, but what I am saying see uh, clinically when we get a patient of stroke the first thing we find out is what functions are lost now when we know what functions are lost 
once once we know that these functions are lost then <coughs> from our knowledge we know like these functions are performed by which areas and once we know which areas are gone then if we know like that this area is supplied by this particular artery then we can we will be sure that okay you know this is the stroke of for example middle cerebral artery or anterior cerebral artery or posterior cerebral artery or basilar artery xyz okay but of course for for that we must have the knowledge of the blood supply of the brain we must have the knowledge of the different areas of the brain where broca's areas is where wernicke area is where hand area is where face area is where sensory areas are where vision area is auditory area all the areas you know so that's a important thing now cortex or cortical whenever there is stroke in the cortex it can present with um contralateral contralateral means other side because because we know that most of the tracks from the right side of the brain goes to the left side and from the left side of the brain goes to the right side so there is contralateral paresis paresis means what weakness okay and now when this contralateral paresis like weakness we see like either it's fade in the face in the arm or in the leg or for example if it's in the leg either uh the person leg is more weaker than arm or the arm have more is more weaker than leg why because when the leg is more weaker than arm you know it means middle cerebral artery area is gone okay so like this right so there is a lot of overs overlapping of the blood supply of the brain as well this is also a very important concept <coughs> and remember it present with upper motor neuron type of injury and i told you already what are they hyperreflexia spasticity babinski sign positive okay so these things will be present and this this is about the motor part what will happen to sensory part cortical hemi sensory loss okay the sensation of the half half part of the body will be gone which is all uh, two point discrimination uh, position sense uh stereognosis all these things will be lost okay and when the stroke involves the dominant lobe very important concept to understand and remember if you are right handed your dominant lobe is the left one if you are left handed people believe that their dominant lobe is the right one which is wrong because even the people who are left handed still most of them their dominant lobe is still left one okay what i mean to say dominant lobe dominant lobe like if you are right handed so your dominant lobe is the left one which means the language area is present in your dominant lobe so whenever the dominant lobe stroke is there so they present with aphasia okay alexia aphasia inability to speak alexia inability to read agraphia a cal calculia inability to calculate okay and they lost left right disorientation they cannot differentiate between the left and the right they they lose this uh, they lose this orientation so that's why we call them as like left right disorientation and when the non dominant lobe for example someone who is right handed and he have the stroke of uh 
left side of the body means light right lobe is affected so we call it as non dominant hemisphere is involved right so they present with hemi neglect they neglect half of the body they neglect half of the space amusia uh, amusia simply um, musia as you can see what is musia musia is music right so amusia is simply uh, these are the people who are unable to um, differentiate musical tones okay we call it as a musia and one more thing which they present with is um, something called as uh, um, dis disprosody dis prosody so uh, we call this thing as you know foreign foreign accent syndrome uh, basically uh, they um, uh, you can say when they talk you know basically their voice quality uh, we, you know, whenever we talk we stress at some words we change our tone and all this one we change our voice quality when we talk you know so they cannot do this thing so they have a like different accent of the speech you know we call it as this this prosody so uh, this thing is what you can say uh, they 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 present with these things uh, one more thing of course like they they present with is uh, uh, constructional apraxia constructional apraxia so what is that uh, it's simply inability to copy the drawings okay or copy the shapes you can say uh, for example you know if you will ask uh, make some shape and you will ask them to copy like they will not, they will be unable to do that so this thing is there. Uh, very important, a very easy way. Yeah, you know, when the language is lost, like it is the dominant lobe stroke, when hemi neglect is there, so it is like the non-dominant lobe stroke. And <coughs> vision-wise, you know, they have homonymous hemi uh, anopia, like the loss of the vision uh, in, you can say, uh, half of the field is called as homonymous hemi, hemi anopia. Uh, they may present with seizures, of course, like, you know, uh, seizures can present with um, any uh, type of stroke, okay, no matter uh, what is there. They can they, they, they may have agnosia. Agnosia is simply um, inability to process sensory information. Like, if I, my eyes are closed and you will put something in my hand, you know, by just touching, I can, I can sense the things, you know, from where, like, from where they are coming. So these are the people they cannot, uh, they cannot, uh, when their eyes are closed and you will put something in their hand like a pencil or anything, you know, uh, they, they cannot tell you what they have in their hand. Ignosia can be visual, can be auditory, uh, by the way, as well. So they may have apraxia, like these things, look, like, of course, like any part of the cortex can give apraxia. So what is apraxia? Uh, apraxia can be simply defined as uh, um, you can say inability uh, to do motor functioning or to perform tasks okay so that's is a apraxia okay so uh, you can say uh, the people they have they they found it difficult to perform some motor movements even though their muscles are normal of that area okay so uh, that is like called as apraxia so you can say uh, inability or uh, disorder of you can say motor movement can be defined as apraxia uh, <laughs> one of the thing which the patients may have uh, who have uh, stroke or cortical stroke simply is uh, something called as uh, um, alien hand syndrome okay that is called as alien hand syndrome okay so 
what is this one? Uh, it's basically um, these are the people uh, like in which like you can say their one hand is not under the control of their brain or are not under the control of their themselves of course like it's the brain which is controlling so like they lose the control of the hand okay so that's why it is called as alien man syndrome and uh, like uh, it can occur of course like in the patients who have stroke um, cortical stroke of course so like uh, the, the persons they feel like you know their hand is acting on their own okay and uh, like of course like there is a too much details about this one uh, so like th this thing can occur of course in cortical stroke now after cortex you know if you will come one level down uh, you can say uh, it is a continuation of like the previous slide okay we are st still um, covering you can say the um, local the stroke localization but as i told you uh, if you guys don't know the parts of the brain the functions of the different parts of the brain plus the blood supply of course it's hard for you to understand the thing so there are sub subcortical regions you know like uh, i show you the arteries you know that go and supply the deeper parts of the brain or so simply those arteries are those which are supplying the subcortical parts of the brain for example they are the one which are supplying the internal capsule okay uh, they are the one which supply the basal ganglias caudate putamen and all those things and i show you thalamus so they are the one which are supplying the thalamus as well so uh, now what is internal capsule again like uh, very very important to study neuron acne guys like i told you from the first lecture things will be hard if you don't know these things uh, but i can show you um, internal capsule structure how it looks like right so uh, basically uh, a very nice diagram by the way I can I can find out over here um, basically you know what happens is uh, uh, all the fibers which are coming from the cortex okay they all the fibers which are coming from the cortex you know they converge together and they pass through a very very tight you can say bundle we call it as internal capsule okay um, for example you are going to find a nice diagram over okay so when they pass you know like this is a cross section so see this is the internal capsule so these are all the fibers so this is the posterior limb this is the anterior limb and this is the genome which is the middle part or which is the angle of the um, internal capsule so see on one side there's lentiform uh, nucleus caudate nucleus and thalamus so of course they, they are going down to the midbrain and down 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 you can again see yeah very nice diagram guys so you can if, if you can see over here uh, this is how internal capsule is found this is a brain all the fibers from the lip from the face from the upper limb from the lower limb they are coming and they are see they are converging together and they are passing through the internal capsule and that's why you can see there is anterior and the posterior uh, limb and see there is face fibers which are at the genome arm fibers trunk fiber as well as like leg fibers right so uh, now whenever there is stroke to the internal capsule uh, there will be contralateral uh, paresis with equally uh, see in that one story was different because i told you we see either the arm is more affected or leg is more affected because we have to see either it's anterior or either it's middle artery syndrome right the middle artery is blocked so in this one equally uh, face arm leg uh, involvement is there okay so and without very important without sensory deficits okay so this is very 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 important okay so this thing is very 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 important and basal ganglia <coughs> okay uh, basal ganglia whenever the basal ganglia are involved like uh, again we already started in movement disorders 
whenever there is basal ganglia are affected the patients they present with movement disorders like parkinsonism what's there pill rolling movements or tremors can be there there bradyk kinesia kinesia will be there then think about parkinsonism okay broad based gait problems will be there um hemi bellismus chorea these are all movement disorders i already uh bellismus is there chorea can be there right so uh, anything can be there right and when the thalamus is involved now, now what is the thalamus uh, the thalamus is the relay station you can say like from like all the sensations which are coming from the different parts of the body the fibers first of all go to the thalamus and then to the brain so remember there will be dense sensory loss whenever the thalamus is affected and contralaterally uh, there is there can be pain syndromes in these patients okay so subcortically um, these areas will be affected uh so other than that you know like subcortical you know what's the next structure it is the brain stem brain stem okay of course like the midbrain the pons and the medulla right so uh now a very 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 important thing guys you know brain stem is the one where most of the fibers they cross over right the right fibers go to the left part and the uh, left uh uh a uh, part uh, fibers goes go to the right part so very 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 important if you found any patient who have crossed hemiplegia uh, paralysis of the half part of the body but as it is crossed what i mean to say crossed i will show, tell you or cross sensory loss think about brain stem disorder like infarction for example someone who have ipsilateral face involvement like the face have weakness on the right side and contralateral contralateral but the body is weak on the left side so the face affected on the right side but the body is affected on the left side so it means like it is a brain stem which is also contralateral body symptoms are there think about this thing and of course like all the fibers which are coming from the uh, cerebellum they are passing through the brain stem so of course like cerebellar fibers never cross over so ipsilateral seri balar disorders now uh, what are seri balar disorders you know we had already covered them um, dystidocokinesia dysmetria um, broad based gait okay uh, all these things you know dan danishers simply okay and there will be nystagmus towards the lesion toward towards lesion okay and uh, the cranial nerves are also involved so there can be diplopia okay and uh, uh, <coughs> something called as intranuclear ophthalmoplegia now why i use the word something because i don't want to talk on this one right now because this one itself is requires a lot of time uh, and now you know uh, guys very very important thing uh, Uh, to to uh, to remember in this one i remember like all brain stem from where the the cranial nerves they come out you know it's they're from the brain stem from the pons from the medulla from the midbrain okay so uh, especially you know uh, from the medulla these are the uh, the cranial nerves which come out like gross glossopharyngeal vagus uh, these are the one which controls the muscles of the or the pharyngeal muscles you know they control so remember when the brain stem is involved the patients present with dysphagia uh, as well as um dysarthria okay uh, they could they could have hearing loss okay and uh, one very important thing when like uh, the patients who have uh, a vertebro vertebro basilar stroke vertebro basilar means like the posterior stroke the basilar artery stroke you can say we call it as vertebro basilar insufficiency they will present with vertigo okay so this is like what happens in the brain stem clinical features of the brain stem stroke uh other than brain stem what are the fun what are the different structures are there in the brain uh which which can which can be damaged uh, which can lead to stroke symptoms is uh, of course cerebellum okay 
seri bellum. So whenever the seri bellum is involved, again, uh, like before, I was talking about the fibers which are crossing, which are passing through the uh, brain stem. But now, when the seri bellum is, is have stroke, so uh, again, think about Danishers, the mnemonic, ipsy lateral, ataxia. Okay. Uh, Ipsilateral ataxia, sorry, ataxia, ataxia will be there. Uh, so they have incoordination, they have unsteadiness, um, dysmetria, okay. Um, tremors, what kind of tremors? We had already discussed intention tremors, right? Uh, intention, like when, 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 do you, when they are going to do some movement, so they have tremors, okay. So intention one in these patients, okay. As well as dysdiodocokinesia, no rapid alternating movements, wide base gait. Okay, it is also called as fascinating gaits. Okay, um, scanning, speech. If you remember British Constitution or baby hippopotamus. Okay, nystagmus. B A and Danishers, okay. So see, all all these things will be there, right? So uh, these will be the features of cerebellum involvement, right? So <laughs> other than that, of course, like uh, uh, one more thing which is left is the spinal cord, of course, right? So the stroke can affect the spinal cord as well, like of course, which will give upper motor neuron type of lesion as well. Spinal cord is a part of CNS. So. Uh, now, when the spinal cord is involved, uh, remember, like, uh, they, they, there should be some level of the spinal cord which will be involved. So, what will happen, like, now, the story will change from hemi, sensory or hemi, paresis to bilateral, motor, or sensory deficits, right? Uh, these patients will be below the level of the lesion, of course, okay? And there will be no facial involvement, okay? Because spinal cord have nothing to do with the face. And you will found a sensory level, okay. For example, if someone who have the, uh, the spinal cord damage, the T10 level, so uh, if you will check the sensations above the umbilicus, they will be there, but below the umbilicus, the sensation will be absent. So uh, we will found a sharp line below which there there is what you can say, uh, decreased sensations, okay. Uh, so uh, <laughs> now very interesting thing, you know, when the spinal cord is the one which is have stroke, so uh, at the level of the lesion, at the level of the lesion, uh, what you will found is like the no motor neuron type of lesion because you know uh, what happens like that anterior spinal nuclei, they are the one or anterior horn cells, they are the one which are destroyed. So when they are destroyed, of course, you know what happens like it gives up lower motor neuron type of lesion. But uh, below that level of uh, lesion, uh, what happened like you will found upper motor neuron type of lesion, okay? So uh, in spinal cord involvement, you know, there will be both upper as well as lower motor neuron type of lesion, right? One more thing, when the spinal cord is involved, guys, there will be a bowel, bladder and sexual dysfunctions, okay? Uh, and all these things can be there. So uh, that's very important. And of course, like other than spinal cord, you know, uh, we are not going to discuss of course, like from the, from the spinal cord, there is nerve roots which arises, and uh, when the nerve roots are in, involved, of course, like they will give lower motor neuron type of signs, and there will be dermatomal or myotomal type of deficits. When the peripheral nerves are involved, of course, like the sensory loss, as I told you, it occurs in stock and glove fashion. Okay, as well as the features are completely lower motor neuron type of lesion. And what happens when the neuromuscular junction are involved or the, when the muscles will be involved? That is our last topics in neurology. We will discuss that. Okay, guys, so this is about the lesion localization, okay, of the stroke, okay. If you don't have this information, like what areas of the brain control which, which, which parts, you know, and you don't have the information about the blood supply, of course, like the things will be hard for you the things will be um, difficult to understand for you if you don't have these informations, okay? Okay, so 
a very good diagram to show you middle cerebral artery is coming from here giving lenticostriate arteries to the deeper structures giving the cortical segment as well as like okay other one so uh, very 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 important diagram <laughs> okay guys so uh, once we have covered this thing now we are going to talk about the other parts of the stroke so what happens is like simply there is reduction in the blood flow to any part of the brain you know of course first of all it will cause 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 ischemia so what is ischemia by the way ischemia is a reversible loss of function okay but when that reduction is so severe or prolonged then of course like the infarction become irreversible why because there is cell death right so uh uh the blood supply to the anterior parts of the brain you know and to the eyes of course it comes from the two carotid arteries like internal carotid artery which i already told you and uh, these branches again in the head you know to uh, give rise to anterior and, and middle cerebral arteries and the posterior part of the brain is supplied by two vertebral arteries which join together and make what basilar artery and which in turn gives many like the posterior cerebral artery as well as many other arteries of course like I'm talking about the circle of Willis. So, and I show you already how the internal carotid artery and the basilar artery, they connect together and form circle of Willis. And uh, this anastomosis uh, is very, very, very important because when, for example, one of the arteries is occluded, um, there is blood supply coming from other sources as well. So, you know, this circle is basically getting... It is a communication in the anterior circulation as well as the posterior circulation. So whenever there is some blockage in any part of the vessel, you can say there is the blood supply can come from the other other arteries. Okay. Uh, so circle of Willis is very, uh, you can say, important structure. So, so what I was talking about about ischemia. Ischemia is simply reversible loss of function if we will do reperfusion we can avoid cell death okay so uh, now uh, of course like whenever anyone have stroke uh, uh, our target is to restore the perfusion okay uh, to the ischemic area and uh, of course like the recovery of the function in ischemic tissue depend on how time long long you know this uh, blockage is there if you will maintain it before you know the things will be better so uh, <coughs> a very important cause of occlusion uh, in the cerebral artery is uh, thrombus formation or atherosclerosis and of course, this thrombus can can block the vessel locally, or it can throw a you can say a small emboli which block a small vessel distally. Okay, what I'm talking about is, for example, of course, like this artery is much smaller than this one. So if someone have a atherosclerotic plaque over here, if this area is blocked, of course, all the circulation will be gone. But for example, if a small part of that thing will break off and go maybe it will block somewhere here so the loss will be less right this is what i mean to say so uh, that's like the thrombus you know which occlude the vessel when it gives like small small emboli of course it, it blocks some distal vessel and this process is more common in internal artery in carotid artery so and Again, you know, the thrombus can come from anywhere, even from heart. So we are going to discuss like this thing, of course. And then we are going to discuss about uh, the clinical features, which a big part we have already covered. And then we are going to talk about the investigations and then the management, right? So uh, talking about what you can say... Uh, the causes of stroke okay uh, talking about the causes of stroke uh, what we are going to talk is uh, 
Okay, wait. Okay, I think like I must write it down. Things would be better. <coughs> okay. So, uh, what we are discussing is the pathophysiology. You can say, okay, what are the causes of stroke or pathophysiology, you know. Of course, like the pathophysiology will discuss, uh, you can say, the causes as well. So, two major types, okay, or pathophysiology. Um, I'm sorry, pathophysiology. So, two major kind of strokes. One is, as you know, ischemic. One is hemorrhagic. Okay. And which one is common? Ischemic is common. Many of the books say 75%. Many of the books say 80%. So, this is around 20%. This is around 80%. So whenever it's about ischemic stroke, so uh, remember um, ischemia, to cause ischemia or to block, to cause the blockage of the vessel, uh, there could be arterial thrombosis, okay. There could be cardiogenic from the heart, the, the thrombosis coming from the heart, um, thrombosis, okay, or cardio genic embolus okay like of course like embolus is the one which is traveling or for example there could be um, systemic like global uh, the blood pressure is reduced and there is no blood supply to the brain or what we can say systemic hypoperfusion uh, of course like when 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 um, systemically there is less uh, less fluid or less blood supply of course you know it will lead to global or like all the brain will get less blood supply talking about the arterial thrombosis uh, it could be um, large vessel affecting the large vessel or it could be small vessel okay whenever it is small vessel we also call we call it as lacunar okay we call it as lacunar stroke lacunar stroke okay so now large vessel The thrombus is blocking a large vessel, for example, internal carotid, vertebral, or intracranial artery. And whenever like it is there, of course, that occlusion will lead to insufficient blood flow beyond that lesion, right? Which means like that it is a hemodynamic type of stroke. The hemodynamics, the dynamics of the blood is disturbed, okay? And the most common cause of that thing is atherosclerosis. Uh, I'm sure like the most, it's the most common cause and I'm sure like you know what is that. By the way, this is the most common one, but okay, there could be dissection of the vessel. There could be vasculitis. Vasculitis means what? Like there is inflammation of the vascular line and of course due to that, it is going to cause thrombus formation there. <laughs> okay, remember guys, whenever it is lacunar stroke or small vessel stroke, okay, it means what? That the small vessels which are supplying the brain, they are damaged. And how they are damaged, you know, hypertension and diabetes are the most common causes, which causes cell thick thickening and the lumen of the artery is reduced, okay. And whenever these kind of strokes are present which is the small artery or lacunar stroke it's affect the small penetrating arteries which i was showing you so what means these kind of stroke will lead to the damage to the basal ganglia internal capsule as well as thalamus right so this one big vessels this one small vessels cardiogenic stroke guys like the blood um, coming to the heart or so to the brain is having some embolus or thrombus or particles coming from the heart for example the most common cause is atrial fibrillation and that's why whenever in neurologic in neurology we do examination we check the heart we check for atrial fibrillation of course like not just this thing but there are many other things for example infective endocarditis can lead uh, prostatic um, prosthetic heart walls can can 
walls can give this kind of stroke okay so uh, of course like other things are also there but like this is the important ones and systemic hyperperfusion again like i think no need to give you examples you know many things already of course like when there is systemic hyperperfusion there is less blood blood supply to all over the body including the brain uh, of course like there are some protective mechanisms which are there but like when the brain cannot accommodate like cannot like when they cannot overcome of course like the brain will get less blood supply so inadequate blood flow to the brain can occur in for example cardiac arrest someone who undergo cardiac arrest their heart is not beating of course there will be no blood supply to the brain in arrhythmias in myocardial infarction okay and uh, now you know whenever this is the reason basically this type of stroke mostly affect the watershed areas now what is watershed area um okay i will show you watershed area wait um sorry i'm going to take you to the concept of watershed area okay um see for example this one is coming from anterior cerebral artery and this blood supply is coming from middle cerebral artery so what happens the blood supply is blocked from here now it's not like this okay wait i can show you on bing as well watershed area brain okay images okay yes uh, yeah um, yes this one see this territory is supplied by middle cerebral artery and this territory is supplied by anterior cerebral artery so there are some small small branches supplying here by MCA and there are some small small branches supply here by ACA so whenever MCA is damaged this area is the, will be the one which will get a little blood supply from here but no blood supply from here so when for example there will be global reduced perfusion what will happen this one have less blood supply this one have less blood, blood supply this one have less, less, less blood supply so these areas because these areas are supplied by very small branches of the vessels or small arterioles so what will happen like they will be devoid of the blood they will no, not get blood so these areas will be damaged much so in global hyperperfusion what are the areas which get damaged the most are the are these areas okay which are the watershed areas now one more concept guys here i will give you and then i will finish this lecture and uh, then we will start with the next lecture uh, a very important concept to remember uh, which i am telling you here for example mc is blocked so see this area don't have blood supply this area don't have blood supply but this area is getting a little blood supply from the aca territory so if we will supply more and more and more oxygen or make the uh, blood uh, what you can supply to the brain better so maybe this area can be protected or if we will uh, so like this area can be protected so this area is called as numbra okay so this is what numbra is so a very important concept okay in this one okay so uh, in systemic hyperperfusion you know the areas which are mostly damaged are the watershed age watershed areas okay so watershed areas are between the major cerebral arteries okay these are the territories between the major cerebral arteries so uh, if we'll talk about the hemorrhagic stroke now so hemorrhagic stroke of course what happens in this one there is um, rupture of the artery right so now uh, they can be simply classified as intracerebral within the uh, brain matter hemorrhage okay or it could be subarachnoid okay with the subarachnoid space 
so whenever like you know there is intracerebral uh, hemorrhage you know the most common causes can be the most common causes hypertension of course like increased blood supply uh, it will lead to the rupture of some aneurysm okay now there are conditions in which like there is more and more aneurysm in the blood in the in the brain uh, and most common sites are putum and thalamus cerebellum and pons and there are many other things for example vasculitis uh, uh, can be the cause or uh, drug abuses like cocaine okay in cocaine like there, there is like sudden increase in the blood pressure which can lead to rupture of the any of the artery okay trauma can also cause this thing okay and subarachnoid hemorrhage uh, there is something called as Berry's aneurysm. Uh, I teach you like there is something called as APKD, atrial polycystic kidney disease, in which like the people they have aneurysm in the brain, and that's why whenever we found people who have APKD, we always screen them for the cerebral aneurysms. So thank you so much, guys. I'm going to finish this lecture over here. In the next lecture, what we are going to talk about is the clinical features, okay, and then we are talk about. Uh, how we can treat the patients who have uh, stroke okay so thank you so much